In July 2024, the Russian occupying forces suffered serious losses both in terms of personnel and equipment. It is quite expected that these indicators set very high and even record values in a number of categories. According to Oboz Revitel media outlet, in July, the Russian occupation contingent suffered not a record number, but the second highest number of losses, 35,680 people. In July, the Russian invaders lost 300 tanks. This is not a record figure and is due to the fact that the Russian command is trying to save and minimize the use of main battle tanks during assault operations. And if fewer tanks began to be brought to the front, then where do we start with records? However, even this indicator is significant and has a sufficient impact on the depletion of battle tank components which the Russian military industrial complex supplies to the combat zone in the amount of up to 300 units per month with a gradual decrease. Losses of combat armored vehicles from the occupiers in July amounted to 653 units. In July, the Russian occupying forces set another absolute record for barrel artillery losses. 1,520. The previous record for the entire period of full-scale war was in June 1415 and before that in May 1160. There are still enough artillery systems in warehouses and storage centers in Russia that they can restore and send to the war zone. The amount for monthly zero compensation will be enough for about a year of active hostilities, but at the same time the quality of the transferred products will decrease and therefore losses will either increase or remain at a fairly high level. In July, the defense forces of Ukraine destroyed 21 Russian rocket launchers. During July, the Russian invaders lost 33 air defense systems. This is not an absolute record, but an average statistical indicator of the destruction of means of this category, which does not allow the Russian military industrial complex to compensate for them. In general, air defense losses of the occupying troops of the aggressor country have long been compensated not even to zero, but steadily in the negative every month. In July, Russians set an absolute record for road transport losses, 2,103. The previous record was set in May, 1831. In July, the category of special equipment took a certain silver, 265. It is obvious that the command of the defense forces of Ukraine, while maintaining the defense strategy, is achieving the main goal of the 2024 campaign, exhausting the occupying forces, bringing them to a state of loss of offensive and defensive capabilities. Analysts at the Institute for the Study of War, ISW, have noted that due to the lack of capacity for a large-scale offensive in Ukraine, the Russian command resorts to periodic impulsive mechanized attacks that are costly for both the Russian forces and the Ukrainian defense forces. Russian forces carried out five mechanized attacks, ranging from platoon to battalion size, in western Donetsk Oblast on the 29th and 30th of July. Analysts noted that these localized mechanized offensives likely reflect a projected Russian summer offensive. However, it is probable that Russian forces lack the broader operational capacity to launch a separate renewed offensive in Donetsk Oblast or elsewhere along the front line this summer. The ISW previously assessed that Russian forces are likely attempting to seize Kostyantinivka and cut the Volodya kostyantinivka T0524 highway, forcing Ukrainians to retreat from the area. The ISW has previously highlighted that Russian forces have struggled with conducting simultaneous large-scale offensives throughout the full-scale war, often resorting to staggered offensive operations across different front sectors. This approach involves decreasing activity on one front while increasing it on another. Throughout the summer, Russian troops have periodically launched platoon and company-sized mechanized assaults on the Lyman, Chasivyar and Avdiivka fronts in Donetsk Oblast with a recent uptick in attacks to the west and southwest of the city of Donetsk. 
The Russian military command may perceive these intermittent mechanized assaults as sufficient to meet their revised, more modest goals for the summer of 2024 or as reflecting the current limitations of their forces. The command could be aiming to present these limited tactical gains, such as the potential severing of the Volida kostyantinivka highway as a significant victory to Russians, despite the general lack of public familiarity with this region. Additionally, the command might be driving the already depleted Russian forces in this area to push forward as far as possible before their combat effectiveness diminishes, regardless of the heavy losses sustained. The Russian military's apparent readiness to incur substantial armored vehicle losses without achieving operationally significant advances or launching a large-scale multi-directional offensive in western Donetsk Oblast is likely to strain its military capabilities in the long run. Analysts also pointed out that Russia's ongoing offensive operations are also costly for Ukraine's defenders and are likely to deteriorate Ukrainian capabilities through attrition, whether they achieve significant success or not.